So the question is, what can we do as practitioners for the people in our lives that are resistant to Dharma, won't hear it, and are stuck in their karmic cycling? Um, this is a question that we all come to think about sooner or later on our paths. And, um, you know, if there was a way to make people practice, just any people, we would already know about it. But there isn't. And the best, what I can think of, well, it's, it's a, a few things. Uh, talk to be people about Dharma, but don't try to force feed them. Then you can pray for them, you can chant mantras for them, you can dedicate merit for them, you can ask blessings from the gurus for them. Um, and it might work or not. The thing is that if there is this word called merit, merit, like in dedication of merit, which translates as readiness, readiness to practice, and willingness to practice. That uh, also you could say that it's that need to practice that I was talking about earlier with the Noble Truths. So if you realize that your suffering comes from yourself, and then you have the fortunate karma to learn about the Dharma, then it's a perfect match. You will start practicing, you will start doing something about it. But if you haven't made the discovery that, you know, that you suffer, that you have this sense uh, that something is off or wrong, then it's you know, not much can be done about it. Mm. So, it is simply the nature of karma and the nature of ripening of karma that it takes a lot of time. Uh, even if we had the best of methods taught in every yoga school, in every city block of the world, there would still be probably most people who didn't really connect with it. Because it has to come from, from the heart, from the deep, from the core. It's sort of like, a, I think that, you know, mindfulness, uh, mindfulness boom has already passed, but there was this boom of mindfulness teachings, mindfulness boom in the world. Uh, well, here in Finland it was like 10-20 uh, years ago. Elsewhere it, ha it has been earlier. But um, these secular mindfulness teachings uh, very quickly spread. And I think, it, think it's awesome. It's much, much better than nothing. But it's still the results from that. If we look look at look at look at secular mindfulness teachings from the point of view of of um, like serious dharma, serious yoga, it's it's then it's not really. Um, It doesn't really have depth. So, but nevertheless, you know, I think it's good because uh, people still practice this, even this light version 
of meditation practice. It's good. Um, and that can actually be, I've used it a lot um, over the years. I used to teach like what is now known as master mindfulness. Uh, I used to teach it years ago, <clears throat> over, over a dozen years ago. And same applies to Tantra and Yoga, really, that, you know, if you speak in weird foreign language, using terms that sound like gibberish in the ears of people, and if these people already have like a doubt regarding spiritual things, meditation, yoga, of course, they will, they'll, they'll, their, uh, how do you say, their barriers, their um, doubt just increases. But if you talk about the same thing, not using any foreign words or concepts, just your own words, describing what it, what happens in your mind, how your mind gets clearer, how your heart gets softer, how you feel better. It's, you know, more relatable, isn't it? So this is also important when communicating Dharma to others, that, you know, if you start talking about pure lands and guru transmissions and shakti and <laughs> all this you know to your grandpa who goes hunting every second weekend might not work so well i have absolutely nothing against hunting but uh, you get my point that you kind of have to you have to smell you have to use your meters when you talk about Dharma to people. Baba, I just wanted to say thank you. I have nothing profound except I feel lighter than on Friday. So, thank you. That is profound, Kedar. Yeah, I, I feel the same. Yesterday, it's a lot of stuff released again, and it was mm. very good. Mm. And the transmission has been very powerful. It's mm. always, but yeah. The next events we will have is next Friday, um, there will be a small evening event, event in southern Germany. We are going to Augsburg with uh, myself, Kaisa and Karl, and there will be a small evening event next Friday. Then I have to check the date. The next retreat in October will be 14th, 16th. That's Zoom. And then there will be a live retreat in November in Finland. Four days in southern Finland, in Porvo. How many are coming from this group are coming for autumn retreat? Okay. I think it's good to book your place as soon as possible because is in case if you haven't yet uh, it's a big mansion but there aren't that many bed places so check with Helena yep thank you very much all the best in your practice thank you for this weekend and have a nice evening see you later thank you Baba Thank you. Thank you, Baba. Thank you.